perspective on magnesium batteries. I now, now want to give you some insights into the polysulfide dissolution behavior in lime-based electrolytes for magnesium sulfur batteries. My talk is uh, outlined uh, with a short motivation in the beginning and then the main method of under UV spectroscopy and microscopy. And with this method, I want to show you some uh, insights into the dissolution behavior during cycling and OCV. And uh, to conclude with the influence of the electrolyte solvent in the end. We heard a lot about um, the magnesium metal and its benefits. But why magnesium sulfur batteries in particular? Magnesium sulfur batteries uh, offer a higher volumetric energy density compared to lithium sulfur, um, the lithium sulfur system. In contrast, the gravimetric energy density is a bit lower, but still way higher than current lithium ion technology. Um, normally on this introduction slides, you can read about magnesium dendrites uh, are not present in this system, but um, I think this is not uh, the case. Uh, there are a lot of uh, literature um, showing that classical dendrite formation is not present due to a higher surface diffusion. But indeed, uh, 3D magnesium growth using the separator as a scaffold, the practical current densities is uh, still observed. And you can see on the right side a recent publication at uh, practical current densities, there's this, there's this spherical growth, um, which might be uh, tuned by electrolyte and separator adjustments, so this issue might be overcome in the future. Overall, magnesium and sulfur uh, are naturally abundant, cheap and non-toxic, which makes this um, system a uh, promising uh, system for, for large-scale application, maybe as Professor Fichtner mentioned, also for stationary energy storage. Why uh, operando UVV spectroscopy to study this uh, system? We haven't heard much about uh, the sulfur system in this conference, so um, I want to give you a short, uh, the, the basics of, of the sulfur system. It's uh, comparable to lithium uh, sulfur, so it uh, relies on the reduction of sulfur to magnesium sulfide in the cathode, and uh, it's accompanied with uh, the polysulfide shuttle, which is um, the origin for the fast capacity decay and the restricted cycle life in all in all uh, sulfur batteries. And uh, the benefit of those uh, intermediate polysulfides is that they absorb visible, the, they absorb light in the visible and uh, ultraviolet um, spectrum. And this makes it possible to detect uh, those species. You can see in the bottom part, uh, those um, absorbance, uh, the, the wavelength is quite distinct, so you can uh, distinguish between uh, each species. Here you can see uh, the, um, the spectra of some, or uh, the spectra at selected uh, stages during uh, cycling of a magnesium sulfur cell. And uh, those um, peaks are assigned to, um, to sulfur species uh, according to previous literature. Uh, which is quite uh, interesting here is that this um, S4 to minus species uh, is quite dominant during this charge, while it was not uh, chemically accessible um, by uh, Beaker and other uh, groups. So this might be only formed electrochemically uh, during the cell, but still uh, the stated um, fact that uh, climbs do not stabilize and S4 to minus uh, might not be true. Those uh, wavelengths marked uh, here or in bold uh, are those wavelengths I focus on and uh, those species um, assigned to it. You can see uh, the voltage profile in the, in the top part of a, a magnesium sulfur cell cycled at C over 20. And in the bottom part, the, the corresponding um, response uh, or from the UV spectra and uh, on the right side, the uh, operando microscopy picture. And you might see uh, now during this charge, there is a coloration of the separator and during uh, charge, it vanishes again. So you see the separator coloration towards the end of the discharge, it vanishes, starts again to color. And then towards the end of the discharge, it's decolored again completely. You can also see uh, 
a black coloration around um, the magnesium ring or the edge, which might be electrolyte decomposition or some sulfur uh, precipitation, polysulfide um, forming magnesium sulfide at the anode surface. To have a closer look at uh, this um, behavior, I selected some, some stages here. You can see uh, in the beginning, there's already a high initial concentration of S8 and S8 uh, 2 minus after cell assembly. Um, despite the, or uh, in contrast, the long or in short and short chain polysulfides are not present. So MGS4 and uh, MGS6 uh, are not or yeah, not present, not that dominant. They are formed during the first um, discharge plateau. And uh, you can also see that they cause this um, strong uh, yellow coloration in the separator. Towards the end of the discharge, uh, all sulfur species um, or the concentration of all sulfur species declines and the separator is decolored uh, again. This is quite reversible, uh, so it's um, observed in every uh, cycle. Having a look on the subsequent charge, uh, the reoxidation takes place of all um, sulfur species simultaneously, but uh, it's incomplete. So you find um, short chain polysulfides, MGS4, MGS6, uh, even at the end uh, of the charge at a quite high charge cutoff potential at 3.54. Uh, in fact, no S3 radical uh, was observed. Uh, this is um, in agreement with the, the former uh, studies by Beaker um, done two years ago, something like that. One can argue that uh, with the lower C rate, um, which is in fact true. So you can see uh, here that uh, at the end of the charge, at point F, the separator is decolored again. Um, but this also triggers the polysulfide shuttle. So uh, the polysulfides have uh, elongated time for diffusion, which is um, yeah not beneficial in the subsequent discharge. You uh, have detrimental um, effects on the anode, uh, which might not be yeah too beneficial. Fast C rates, in contrast, um, uh, increase the over potential and uh, also reduce the, the capacity gain. So we see here uh, quite a significant influence. If we have a look on the self-discharge, so the behavior during OCV, uh, severe self-discharge is observed uh, in, in all glimes we, we uh, examined. Um, with a high initial um, elemental sulfur and is A to minus uh, concentration. And after around 20 hours, uh, the short chain polysulfides take over. So they are uh, formed at the anode side and are then dominant um, in the electrolyte solution. Uh, if you have a look on the first plateau in the subsequent discharge, um, this is completely missing. So um, MGS4 formation is um, yeah, already takes, took place and no capacity can be gained from that. Uh, in the subsequent cycling, the um, concentration of the short chain polysulfides is rather stable at a high level, while the elemental sulfur concentration declines. So uh, there's yeah all um, polysulfides uh, present in the electrolyte. Now I want to, to give you an insight into the influence of the electrolyte solvent. Um, we um, examined the three different glymes, monoclime, declime, and tetraclime. Um, we see uh, the chemical and physical properties in the uh, bottom table and the first three cycles on the right side. If you have a look on the uh, charge behavior, uh, the old potential rises with a uh, longer climb length, which is due to um, an increased uh, old potential um, increased uh, solvation of the magnesium cation, uh, which is despite the fact that uh, tetraclime um, exhibits a, 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 quite, a, a quite low donor number or a lower donor number than uh, monoclime, for example, um, but it's due to the chelate uh, effect. So it's there's a strong solvation of the magnesium cations in this case, and this 
um, causes this over potential uh, dissolvation at the anode. Um, yeah, and also the capacity gain is, is reduced during charge. Uh, this is also obvious in the subsequent discharge, uh, that the capacity of the first um, plateau is, is shortened so, or the, is uh, reduced. Um, in contrast, the solvent influence on the uh, discharge potential plateau itself, uh, so the position, is, is neglectable um, after wetting. And when we have a look on the first with the third cycle, um, you can see that monoglyme already uh, shows over potential during discharge, um, indicating uh, cell tryout. So might not be um, the solvent of choice for long-term cycling in, in practical cells. Uh, to have a, um, a deeper insight, uh, we, we synthesized some uh, solutions so the, and investigate uh, the conductivity and viscosity. Um, we have here the pure solvent, uh, the solvent um, with um, polysulfide, uh, polysulfide solution, uh, then the, the electrolyte solution, and uh, the electrolyte with the polysulfide solution. And you can see that um, the conductivity decreases with climb length, which is for the same reason I mentioned before. So the stronger solvation of the cations um, with longer climbs. So tetraclim uh, increases the, the uh, solvation of the magnesium cation and reduces their mobility. So conductivity decreases. Uh, in contrast, contrast, viscosity increases, um, which is uh, following the same trend of the, the pure solvents, but this is mainly determined by the solvents itself. Um, the influence of the polysulfides are, are uh, neglectable, at least in this um, concentration range. So this is a quite uh, low concentration of uh, 10 millimolar, uh, but higher concentrated uh, polysulfides are not synthesizable yet. Uh, but I think it's comparable to, to practical cells. So I think uh, this might not be an issue to consider at the moment. And based on this insights, uh, Declime offers the best compromise as uh, Piotr already uh, mentioned before. It, it offers a moderate uh, magnesium uh, solvation. So the desolvation uh, energy is, is lower than compared to, to tetraclime. The volatility is lower due to the higher boiling point and uh, viscosity is still uh, quite low. But still also with the decline, we observe um, this polysulfide shuttle and uh, the self-discharge. So it's not perfect, but uh, from this climb family, I would recommend to use this one. With this, I want to uh, conclude um, operando with spectroscopy and microscopy are uh, well-suited methods. And with this, uh, to, to study the polysulfide dissolution behavior, and uh, with this method, uh, we found that even uh, after directly after cell assembly, there is a high initial um, elemental sulfur concentration in the cell. And uh, during um, discharge, MGS6 and MGS4 are formed, and uh, they decrease uh, this, their concentration decreases again uh, towards the end of the discharge. Um, during charge, an incomplete reoxidation is uh, observed, even um, due to the high, uh, despite the high uh, charge cutoff potential. Slow C rates are beneficial uh, for this complete reoxidation, but only for the, the short chain polysulfides. So the long chain polysulfides are still present and uh, cause uh, or involved in this polysulfide shuttle. Uh, severe self-discharge was observed in all glimes, um, unfortunately, uh, with the dissolution of uh, S8 in the beginning and the subsequent formation of um, short-term polysulfides. And uh, from the glime family, uh, D-glime is recommended due to um, a best compromise of uh, solvation, uh, viscosity and volatility. With that, I want to, to give a short uh, outlook um, because uh, we only uh, had a look on this mechanical intrusion uh, cathode. So this was simply mixing elemental sulfur and carbon. Um, but there are a lot, of, a lot of other polysulfide retention approaches promising from uh, or in the lithium sulfur system. Uh, for example, to access those uh, narrow pores 
you need uh, the vapor phase infiltration uh, method. Um, in addition, there is also host surface functionalization, uh, covenantly bound sulfur or polar additives to be considered. And we are already uh, in collaboration with partners to, to investigate those. With that, I want to thank um, the EU and the Federal Ministry for Education and Research for funding Imagine and Maxima, those two projects. And I want to thank all the partners for this already nice uh, collaboration and my students for all their uh, lab work done. And thank you for listening. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for, for the nice presentation, the new approach to learn more about the electrolyte uh, uh, inside of the electrolyte on the effect of the solvent. Uh, the solvent, sorry. Um, just I had one question here that popped up recently from Murak Getze. Uh, he said the, the discharge of voltage is zero. Is this useful for the magnesium sulfate cells? Uh, this seems to be a large usable window from application point of view without the risk of over discharging. Thank you very much. Yeah, in fact, that's uh, that's not a practical um, voltage range. So I mentioned before, uh, 3.5 volt uh, during charge is quite high and also uh, zero volt during discharge is quite low. But we want to, to examine the, the edges uh, where those um, species are reduced or uh, completely reoxidized. So we want to, to stretch this um, this window a bit. And uh, this gives gives insight uh, for further um, cut of voltages. So um, in fact, the, the cathode has to be improved. So the O potentials have to be minimized. That's true, that's true. But also um, to elongate or to divide in this window and to investigate um, where those species are uh, reduced or oxidized gives hint for further um, definition of the, the cutoff uh, potentials. Hope this answers the question. Yes, otherwise he will again write down in the Q8. <laughs> um, so uh, we have them, um, yeah, one more question. We have time for that question as well. Uh, sorry, if I don't pronounce correctly the names, but they from Brashark. Akiseti, he say, uh, hi, Hokin, nice talk. How come the magnesium sulfur has high theoretical energy density that the lithium sulfur system in terms of the gravimetric? The gravimetric energy density is lower, or what was the volume yeah, is higher? The gravimetric energy is lower. Yeah, so the volumetric uh, energy density comes from the high volumetric capacity of, of um, magnesium. But on, in contrast, the cryometric is, is lower than. Yeah, probably I'm, uh, I'm misreading during the presentations from her side. Yeah. I can I can go back in the beginning. See yeah, here. Cryometric mm. is lower. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hello, Joaquin. Uh, Luis, uh, we have time for another question? Uh, yes, we had uh, one minute more, at least a couple of minutes. Okay, okay. I have a question uh, regarding that uh, today we have seen several presentations with a real great improvements in magnesium ion technology with good uh, new intercalation materials, as for example, uh, vanadium sulfide, uh, polyantraginone, and so on, materials with uh, large specific capacity and also uh, good uh, uh, discharge voltage. Uh, how do you consider taking into account the result that you have shown the competitiveness of magnesium sulfur technology uh, in comparison with magnesium ion? In, in, lithium, in lithium, with lithium is clear, uh, but uh, in the case of magnesium, I take into account the, the low uh, practical voltage uh, of, the, uh, of the such technology. Can you can you give us your opinion? Yeah, indeed, uh, the the over potentials are quite high at the moment, and um, there is definitely uh, room to improve. Uh, this is um, one thing I mentioned in, in the last slide. Uh, we want to to examine some redox mediators together with um, DTU to access the second plateau where the the, the most of the, the capacity is gained from, um, okay. which is yeah, which is uh, opening. I would say. Uh, 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 the, the field for, for high energy yeah. uh, 
uh, density cells. But yeah, there's a, a lot of work to, uh, to be done. And at the moment, yeah. uh, the reason ion cathodes look uh, more promising, uh, especially when you have a look on the recycling uh, performance. So the capacity decay is also quite uh, severe in magnesium sulfur. Thank you very much, Joaquin. You're welcome. So uh, let's thank a, again to the speaker, Joaquin. Thank you very much, Joaquin, for your great job on work. Okay. <laughs>